Hello, what is going on everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome to hopefully a long series. This is the first video in uh, my attempt to record what I can of the Pico CTF 2018 game. Um, I have another series on YouTube for Pico CTF 2017 that I'm not completely finished yet, but uh, I, I just wanted to showcase Pico CTF 2018 because it's been an awesome game. Uh, personally, I have only solved, like as an individual, I think only up to 20,000 points worth of challenges, but hopefully that's still okay in playing. To, plenty to showcase uh, as the game is now over, and I can release some of this cool stuff. I'm actually recording this before the game ends, so hopefully I'll have a little bit of time and some backlog stuff that I'll be able to show you. Um, I'm not going to go through the game rendition of this. I'm just going to be actually solving the CTF challenges through the problems page itself. Um, so I'm on, I'm running Linux, right? And I'm going to try and make this as beginner-friendly as I can for the first uh, segment or so, or for the first like couple of videos in the series, so I'm, I'm still friendly to people that haven't been doing this for, for all too long. Um, so let's go go ahead and get started with the first couple of challenges running Linux. So I have a terminal open. Um, I have a folder created for the game. I have a lot of the folders already created for the first couple of challenges that I want to solve in this video. And we'll cre keep creating folders as we move on. So let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, this first challenge here, Forensics Warm-Up 1. Uh, can you just unzip this file for me and retrieve the flag? So if you wanted to, you could click on this and download it and move it into the folder or whatever. What I like to do, and I've been doing in a lot of recent videos, is just right-click on a link and then open or copy the link address so that I can, in my terminal, wget-it, which is default on Ubuntu, or I think it's default on Ubuntu, whatever. Um, some Linux systems where we can just download that file. If you don't have it, you can sudo apt or sudo yum install, whatever package manager you're using. Hopefully, you're running Linux. So that way it'll automatically get the file in our current directory where I'm working with in the terminal. So we have flag.zip. I'm actually, I do want to move this into forensics warmup one. Um, and I totally forgot the flag file. All right, so one. There we go. Now I can go ahead and work with this thing. If you were to use just a file explorer, you could click on it and open it up, and that's cheesy and fun and cool, but I want to do this from the command line. I want to automate it, so I'm just going to unzip, which is again a built-in, I think, on Linux, where we can, if we have zip tools, we can go ahead and unzip it, and unzip flag.zip, and it will create this new file folder for us, uh, flag.jpg. So I'm going to eye of gnome, or eog, that image, check it out here, and it says, Pico CTF, welcome to forensics. Um, I'm going to try and write that down. So I just use Terminator right this in this case to go ahead and split my screen. So I'm going to use Pico CTF is all lowercase except for CTFs. And it looks like all of this is lowercase. Welcome to forensics. Cool. So I use Nano as a text editor there just to go ahead and save that. And let's paste that in. See if we get the points. Nope, I failed. I had an S in there. Welcome to forensics, not welcomes. <laughs> I like to keep these zero, this this video these these videos in this series. Holy cow, I can't speak. <laughs> I like to keep these videos pretty real, so hopefully you can bear with me. Hopefully it's fun. Whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, close out of that. I don't need I have no open anymore. And once I move out of there, I can move forensics warm up one to complete. So now that that's marked complete, we can move on. All right, forensics warm up two. For some reason, I can't open this PNG. Let's go ahead and check it out. Move into Forensics Warm-Up 2, wget that file. And now we have it as a oops, image file, just a PNG. If I click on it, though, or open it up, it just won't open. It says Fatal Error Reading PNG Image, not a PNG file. So we could go ahead and run the file command on this file, file flag.png, and it reads it as instead a JPEG image. So what if we were to just simply rename this file to not flag.png, but flag.jpg. Now could I simply I of gnome or open it in Nautilus as I had before? So let's just run I of gnome flag.jpg. And it says Pico CTF extensions are uh, extensions are a lie. Nice. Let's jot that down. Extensions are a lie. And if I wanted to, I can cat flag.txt and pipe it to xclip. And if you don't have X, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. If you don't have Xclip installed, you can sudo apt install Xclip if you wanted to. And I actually just have it aliased to Xclip selection clipboard. So whatever I pipe into will automatically be copied into my clipboard. Go ahead and paste that in. That's correct. Cool. We're moving on. Let's go ahead and move into general warm-up number one. If I told you your grade was 0x41 in hexadecimal, what would it be in ASCII? 
You can check out the hints here, and there are usually hints for a lot of these tasks, which is pretty handy. It says, submit your answer in our competition's flag format. So, example, if your answer was hello, you would submit Pico CTF curly braces hello as the flag. So it just wraps around. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's move into another folder for us after we mark this challenge as complete, the previous one. And our answer is 0x41 in hexadecimal. We want it in ASCII. So if you don't know what ASCII is, you could go ahead and Google that. There is such thing as an ASCII table, but ASCII is really just like, okay, the kind of procedure or character encoding standard for electronic communication. So numbers in the range from zero to, two five, zero to 255 uh, have a kind of representation when you look at it as text. So if you wanted to, we could view it in a ASCII table which I guess I'm just going to go for an image of. Standard character ASCII set. If we had 0x41, which is what we are looking at in hex right now, I'm going to fire up Python. So you can just see that in decimal is 65. So in our ASCII table, if you wanted to check out the hexadecimal column, the hex you can see in the middle there, you can check out 41 and that is 6.5 in decimal, as it sees in the same column. The CHR, or the character of it, when it's considered to be represented in ASCII, it's just a capital letter A. So that should be the flag. Let's actually just take note of that. Flag.text. Pico CTF, remember it wants it wrapped in there, Pico CTF A. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and actually create a get flag script in Python. So I'm going to do this in nano again. Let's do nano get flag.py get a simple shebang line, which is necessary for the system to know what kind of script we're running. Let's go ahead and print out Pico CTF with curly braces, and then let's use percent %s to denote that I'm going to be using a format specifier here. I'm going to use the percent sign, and I want to take the string of 0x41, as we expected here. So 0x41 is going to be evaluated to in decimal because Python represents everything typically in decimal, so it'll go 65 first. And actually, I'm sorry, we don't want the string of that. We want the character version of it, or it in ASCII. So it's not str we want. We're not going to convert just the number 65 to a string. We want it converted to ASCII. So let's use chr to get the ASCII value. Let's go ahead and run Python get flag, and it's pico ctfa. So great, let's convert that to an executable, or not an, not convert to an executable, but mark it as executable with chmod. Then we can dot slash it, and then if you wanted to, just for handy purposes, you could redirect it to flag.txt, but we already have that done for us. So let's go ahead and submit this. Paste it in. We are correct. Cool. And I moved all of that into the, uh, the, the big folder here. Let's put it all in general warm-up. So let's check out, uh, after we mark that one complete, we can check out general warm-up number two. What do we got here? Can you convert the number 27 to binary or base two? Yeah, we can do that in Python a little bit more as well. Let's go ahead into general warm-up two, and let's go ahead and copy the general warm-up one get flag script into this directory. So we can go ahead and nano that. And then instead of actually converting this string of chr 0 x four one one as we had in the other challenge. Let's actually take the number 27, treat it as an integer, and in Python you can actually pass a second argument to this integer function, and you can say what base you want it in. So I'm going to say 0, 2, but if we were to check this out in Python, uh, comma 2, sorry, <laughs> not 0, 2, so base 2, if I were to check out what this gives me in Python, int should be convert it as a string. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm totally going wrong here. We want to just run the function bin because that'll convert it to binary for us, not into. Into will expect to take a string given a base and interpret it as a different number. So bin2 was really what we want here. Except when I run bin2, you'll notice it returns a string for me, but it uses 0b as a prefix to denote that, okay, this is binary numbers here. So we, would, we could actually go ahead and slice that. And slicing in Python just means kind of indexing, but cutting pieces off of it. So if I want to take the second character and like the first two characters off, I could say, let's go zero two, let's go two characters in and then 
colon to cut from that position, two characters in, all the way to the end. So all we have are the 11011. It just slices that end bit off for us. Just like that. So I'm totally wrong. I'm sorry I kind of went down that rabbit hole with, you know, <laughs> giving you the wrong information. You're <laughs> trying to call the in function when you should run the binary function. Sweet, whatever. Let's go ahead and try and run that. Let's run Python get flag. And now we have Pico CTF 11011. Submit. That's correct. Awesome. Let's go ahead and redirect that to a flag.txt file just for good practice. Move general warmup two to be complete. And let's check out get general warmup three. I'm probably saying words that I don't even mean to mean, mean to say here. Whatever. You guys know how it is. What is this number? 0x3d base 16 hexadecimal in decimal base 10. This again wants it in the flag format. So let's do the exact same thing. Let's change directory into general warmup three. Copy general warmup two all the way, their, their get flag script all the way into this directory, not too far on the file system. <laughs> Nano get flag to change the script up. And let's go ahead and change the 0x3d from decimal into decimal base 10. So since Python will automatically want to convert this to decimal, it'll go ahead and do that. And then we can run str on it to get uh, the number that we're expecting here. So let's run Python get flag. We get 61. Redirect that to flag.txt file, xclip it so we have in our clipboard. Let's go ahead and paste it in. And we are moving, just like that. So cool, 250 points, just kind of breezing right through some of these. I hope you're learning a little bit. Just right now, this is simple stuff, right? These are just warm up challenges, but they're still good to knock out of the way and showcase what you can do with Python. Um, Python is certainly going to be your sword in a capture flag or CTF game. So I don't know, don't take it lightly, know how to do just about everything you want to do with it. Hey, quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I cannot say this enough. You are what makes this channel a reality. Like, in all, in all complete honesty, you are my motivation, the support structure that I need. Well, that sounds kind of, that sounds kind of morbid, like it... I don't know. Whatever. I'm not depressed or anything. One dollar a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. Um, it super duper helps me. It's, I'm just grateful for it. $5 a month on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. It's kind of early access to some of my videos, but uh, I lately have been pretty bad about getting some stuff out in the system, out in the world, um, so I apologize for the for that, but hopefully, maybe it'll come in handy. <laughs> maybe, and I, I'm grateful for anything that you're, you're just willing to support and, and help with, so... Hey, if you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. Hope to showcase some more Pico CTF 2018 and other Capture the Flag competitions and challenges. Cool stuff. Uh, please do join our Discord server. Link in the description. It's a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Um, you can hang out with me, other awesome people, and it's just a really cool community if you want to learn something new and just kind of get exposure to the, the field like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.